Well, I'm just going to say, um, if you don't play on the record, what's both of your approaches to kind of learning that song? That's a good one. So typically they send us the stems, but for this previous, for this last record, I did not get the stems. <clears throat> but the drums are pretty heavily in the mix as it is, so I, I have my chart book with me, and I can gladly pass around like one of the tunes or just the book in general. But I chart everything out completely. I have my own way of doing it. Um, I've charted every song, like even if it's like, oh, there's an open hi hat here, I'm charting that out. Um, to uh, you know, oh, there's a E and, but the E is a little softer. I put that in there. Um, I, I'm OCD about it. I want to play everything just like the record. Um, so it's not like, I'm curious, because I don't know, uh, so your process in writing that out, it's not like a stereotypical standard like rhythm notation approach. No, no, I'm writing the rhythms out. I am right, writing the right. rhythms out. But yeah, what yeah. do you mean, like you said, you have your own unique... Like like the dynamics you're adding stuff in there? That Like I'll write the dynamics in, or like I'll write, like if, say the intro, the first four bars is like I'll just write like HH equals eighth notes and I'll put the kick and snare pattern and then I'll just write it out for the first bar and then I know that happens three more times but say on the fourth bar there's a fill so after that first bar I'll write a two to know that it happens two more times and I'll write out that last bar with the fill gotcha so I don't write every single thing out for uh, the whole song yeah like if something repeats I'll just put a number next to it of like this is how many more times this happens. Gotcha. Cool. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's also like the Nashville number system, which I was showing some guys yesterday, where for drummers, you can just write like, say the the verse is eight bars. Each one is a bar. So you could write like, eight, you could write eight ones, and then to the left of it, you could put what the groove would be, and then say there's a fill at that last bar transitioning into the chorus, you could write that in that, right where that last bar is, is like a guide. So I know for me, when I first joined the band a couple years ago, the band leader sent me uh, some live recordings, a lot of live recordings. Hey, these are the songs we likely will play. And here's some songs that we could potentially play. And then here's some that, you know, just learn, be familiar with. So there's like three different categories. And I didn't have any stems. Um, so those of you out there that, you know, learn music and stuff, y'all probably know half or all of these tricks. But, you know headphones help you know especially as bass players you know if sometimes if you're trying to learn a bass part on your phone speakers it's like i can't really hear that and then are y'all hip to moises the app m-o-i-s-e-s -E that's a great tool i've been using that um it kind of isolates parts it can pull out just the drums or just the vocals there's other software that does that but that's a real convenient one on your phone it's awesome i would highly recommend that it's a lot of fun and anytime I do like a cover or something online, I'll you can pull the old bass out. And so anyway, so I used that a little bit. Actually, at that time, I don't know if I was hip to that software. So I learned it as best I could based on the recording. And then I try when I had the rehearsals a couple years ago, my first rehearsal, I had a lot of songs swimming in my head because they were basically like, you're new, but we need you to know these tunes. So I just, you know, locked locked my room, turned my phone upside down and practiced for days and days and days and got as close as I could to the record. So I went in and we start playing and the band leader's like, that sounds great, man, good job. He's like, I hear you playing the album and you're killing it. He goes, keep doing that if you want. He goes, you can add your flavor a little bit too if you want because he trusted me enough to know that I'm not gonna go crazy, you know. We're supporting in this genre, we're supporting the singer. I mean, it's, it's their show, you know, so it's like, um, so I like to honor at least the original recording as close as I can. So yeah, just time and elbow grease and trying to learn the, and then now, yeah, when they send the stems, I'll go in and I'll transcribe the part. I've got Sibelius mutate music notation software and I'll do that. And so even if I vary from that, I can always refer back and go like, Oh, that is the part that he played as close as I can get, you know, uh, based on my abilities. Uh, so yeah. And you know, I've, played it in a lot of different cover bands and even other uh, original artist bands. I start with a recording and then work backwards, you know, like go to the top and then let them tell me, hey, it's a different live arrangement or, hey, do whatever the heck you want or, hey, I, don't, I hated that bass part, do something different, you know, but I start there, especially when other people are paying me. If nobody's paying me and it's my deal, I'll just, yeah, anyways. So, yeah, great question, man, great question. What's a stem? What's a what? Oh, a stem. So, someone out there may have a better definition but typically like 
stems are stems i feel like there's some pros out there some of y'all look like i can tell by the way you're dressed <laughs> you know like the all black yeah so stems can kind of be like a couple of parts in one but it'll usually be like all the keyboards in one and then because i mean if it or it, or do stems mean literally like just the hi-hat just the snare it depends so for drums it could be just the hi-hat just the snare okay. and and that honestly it's kind of annoying when they say if they send it that way sometimes they'll just send the drums as one thing as one stem all together like the actual part which i prefer because i like to do that like listen to each section of the song so that way you don't have to go back in and remix the whole thing for you yeah and like can you imagine having like just do the kick drum part then this it's gonna take me forever yeah basically it's the it's the parts from the album because you know when you're recording there's like a sound console and you go boop 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 boop. so then it's like just the bass part they'll send to me and then maybe a mix of the rest of the band or maybe like all the guitars on one audio track and then the bass and then the drums and then the keys but if there's three keys parts they'll kind of sum it down into one unless the keys player's like hey man i don't know which one to do because we only have one one piano player you know so he's like which part do you want me to do can you send me those individual parts because i can't hear the whatever 